Welcome folks, Jason Hoppy here to walk you through the repeat feature in Adobe Illustrator. This was added last year in Adobe Illustrator 2021. It's a nice little feature. Um, it's got some interesting quirks to it that I want to walk through. So first of all, I created a nice little petal or a leaf for a flower. And I'm going to select it, go under my object menu, and choose the repeat function and I'm going to choose a radial repeat. The radial repeat will come up and it will allow me to control the number of instances of the object by clicking on the double-ended arrow with a circle on the right side, dragging up and down to control the number of instances of my object. The top circle that is looping around my entire object here allows me to basically control the radius and the angle at which these objects are situated. I grab the little clamshells here and I can run those around the circle and I can turn on and turn off the instances to create an arc on the radius. Pretty simple. If I want to resize the entire repeat system overall, I can go to any one of my corners, hold my shift key and scale that down and move that around. Now what's interesting about this repeat feature is I don't have the ability to go in and actually edit my physical artwork. So if I wanted to edit this pedal here and I were to go into like my direct selection tool, you'll notice you can't select it. And I'm going to show you in my layers panel here, you'll notice when we do this repeat function, it simply shows up here as a radial repeat with nothing else that I can open up in this layer to get access to. My options for this radial repeat are under Object, Repeat, Options. And here I can control the number of instances that I have, which I can do here from my double-ended arrow. I can control the radius overall of my object, and I can also reverse the overlap here if I've got multiple objects and I would like to go in and I would like to change the direction. And I'm gonna show you that. But first I have to go into the Repeat and I have to release my objects to get it back to my initial object so I can change the object. And here I'm going to go ahead and throw a dark red stroke around my object to show you that overlap function. Select the object again, choose Object, Repeat, Radial, and it's gonna give me my number of instances. And you can see I can make a flower out of this, but you can see how they overlap going through. Object, Repeat, Options, you can see that you can change that overlap and reverse the overlap there so that it comes in and it overlaps. Okay, and do that. Now this is tricky when you have overlapping objects because the final object here doesn't actually over or underlap like it's supposed to. And I've got a totally separate video on that to go ahead and fix that. But this is just one of the interesting things you can do with the radial repeat function. I'm going to scale this down because what I'm going to do here is kind of unique and interesting. I'm going to take my radial repeat that I've done. Here it is in my layers panel. And I'm now going to go under object and choose repeat. And I'm going to do a radial repeat with this. So what this will allow me to do is this will allow me to take a repeated section of artwork and repeat it again. So here I've taken my leaf and I've done a repeat and then I've done the repeat again. Now you'll notice here in my layers panel, I only get the radial repeat and it's just this entire um, section all put together. It's not these individual sections. So we're gonna leave that right there because when we come back to this, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna take those apart and kind of the interesting features. The next feature I wanna show you is another type of repeat under the object menu repeat and this is a grid repeat pretty simple you have pull handles kind of like shades on the bottom and the right hand side to reveal or hide more or less the upper scrubby is going to give you distance between those things horizontally and the left hand scrubby is going to give you the distance vertically between your objects and then you just have to basically open up your window shades to see what it is that you want to see with your repeat. Back under the object menu, under repeat and options, I can change the grid type from a standard grid to a brick by row or a brick by column. And that's just a stagger overlay here. 
And I've got some other options if I had some kind of asymmetrical shapes here. I could flip those rows if I wanted to. I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice here what's interesting is that it's kind of giving us a picture frame of our objects here. So some of these are going to cut, be cut off. Yep, they will be. And that's basically what the grid will do for you, but you can very easily open up or close up those areas and get more of that grid structure. Cool. I'm going to turn off that grid repeat because we're going to come back to that one. And I want to talk about my mirror repeat here. And what I've actually created here is basically half of a symmetrical object. So this is a t-shirt. You can create a vase or anything that you would like to make in perfect symmetry. We're going to use the mirror function. Object, repeat, mirror. And the default is going to give me an exact mirror over my dotted line here. These balls right here, these little circles at the top, if you move those, they will change the actual rotation of the mirror here. And I don't want to do that. This ball will allow you to go ahead and change the overlap of that right there. Under the object menu, repeat options, you can see that you can go to your mirror section and then you can control whatever type of reflection that you want. And this is a 90 degree mirror right there. What's interesting about the mirror here is that when you use the mirror reflect, it enters into isolation mode. Isolation mode, you'll see this gray bar across the top, and you'll also see in your layers panel that we're in isolation mode. So when you're done with using this reflect or this mirror repeat, you have to hit your escape key to get out of it. Okay? So now what we have is we have our three sets of objects here. We've gone in and we have done our radial repeat up here, we've done our grid repeat right here, and we've done our mirror repeat over here. So, it, each and every one of these is still editable as an actual repeat, because you can see these are all the repeat, basically the little clusters or whatever you want to call them, but they're still in repeat mode. But if I'd like to get in here and begin to edit these as separate objects, here I'm going to take my radial repeat and select it. I'm going to go into the object menu and I'm going to choose expand. And I'm going to expand, which is going to basically take me out of repeat and just give me my basic shapes. So I choose Object Expand, and then it brings these back into the group of the objects. And you can see my groups right here. And in those groups right there, interestingly enough, once I basically expand this, now I have each and every one of these as its own individual radial repeat still. So even though I did a radial repeat and then repeated these all around, once I expanded it, it expanded the overall radial repeat, but I now have these as individual radial repeats that I could adjust here. Or if I wanted to, I could go under object and expand and expand those to break those out of the radial repeat. They always end up as groups, so you'll have to ungroup them and then you will have to ungroup them again in order to be able to get and have access to each and every one of those individual items here, those little petals right there. So interesting ways that we can go in and we can break apart these radial repeats and a radial repeat that has been repeated again. The grid repeat is a little bit more unique, okay? So we are still going to use the object expand feature to be able to get past this little repeat function. We're going to expand the stroke and the fill. There we go. So now we no longer have the repeat handles and the little sliders for distance in between those objects. I'm going to go over to my layers panel and what we have is we have a clipping path. We basically have a picture frame or a border that's basically clipping our objects. There's more objects than we're seeing here. If I go to my layers panel, open up my clip group and click on this layer and then target it by clicking that circle, I can then delete my clipping path and then you're going to see the entire group of objects there without the frame, without the window around it. And these are all a group. And then you can ungroup this if you want to by selecting the group, object ungroup, and now you'll have each and every one of these items all by itself that you can then move around. We have to ungroup it twice, 
I don't know why you have to ungroup it twice, but you do. For some reason, when you get the radial repeat and you expand, you have to ungroup and then ungroup again. It's a double ungroup to get it back to these specific objects. And then you can move those around, scale them in size. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my shirt that I went ahead and did my mirror repeat on. And the mirror repeat, again, we're going to select this, choose object, and expand. And we're going to expand this entire thing. So we expand it right here, and then I open it up. And what's interesting is we expanded this, and now I have both the left and right hand side of the shirt. But oddly enough, the left and the right hand side of the shirt are still in mirror repeat mode, even though I expanded it. So I'm going to select the right hand and then target it, object, expand. And when I do that and I expand that, then that is going to get me out of the mirror repeat, even though it still says it right here. This is weird. It still names this as a mirror repeat, but it really isn't. And it's like, okay, that's really weird. Okay, so I'm going to get this out of the mirror repeat. And it's actually a clipping group. That's weird. So I go into the clipping group, select the clipping path, target it, and delete the clipping path around the shape. Why there's a clipping path around that shape? I don't know. It's not cutting anything off. There it is. And now I've got this big long list of everything. I'm going to go back and select these and then go under Object Ungroup and it will ungroup the first level. I do Object Ungroup again. It'll ungroup the second level. And now I've got my items and now I can go in and I can start to work with these particular shapes by themselves. So really weird stuff goes on with a mirror and you have to do a lot of expanding and ungrouping. Now I could simply take those and move those together. And then of course I could join those together by using my shape builder tool, which is shift M. And then I could drag over these. But the weird thing is, is that because this is a clipping group here, it doesn't want to let me join these together. Frustrating. So now I have to go under my object menu under clipping mask and I have to release and now I'm finally done. It's ungrouped, it's unclipped, it's unmasked, it's on everything. And now I just have my basic paths. Now I can use my Shape Builder tool, which is Shift M, drag over the selected objects, and put those all together. So kind of a you know interesting way to be able to go through and use these different repeat functions here able to expand them and break them apart to get back into their basic shapes. Each one's unique. Check it out. See what you think.